Oh, wow. It's amazing how you guys found an actor that looks exactly like Dracula. Okay. That's so creepy. I lost myself for a second. Love Malen. Too cute. He can be Santa Claus. <laughs> Why I chose the number 33. Hey, welcome back. We're the Three Musketeers. This is behind the scenes on my movie, Hotel 33. Make sure you watch to the end where I reveal why I use the number 33. So as you guys know, I shot this movie on tour with Shin Yun, and that's actually what made it so difficult because I had the responsibilities of being with Shin Yun and I had the responsibilities of making this movie. They're both really demanding, and I'll let you guys know later on why that was. Pre-production, which is where I wrote the script, started around three months ago when we are in Vancouver and this is like the most mentally tiring part because the whole day I would just be thinking like, what is a good way to make the story better? How can I convert that to this? How can I put something here that will pay off later on? A lot of times when I was thinking things in my brain, when I set it out, it didn't work so I had to bounce ideas off a lot of people. So this process took about a month of me writing the script. Next, we have the actual shooting process of the film. It took around five days to shoot this film and we shot in Toronto and London. Day one of the shoot, we shot the elevator scenes. I remember we started around five or six. I told Li Shai, Li Shai, I think it's gonna take around two hours, so we'll be done soon. And then it actually took around four hours, finishing at 11.30. And I think on that day, people were falling asleep while shooting. Yeah, okay. Day one of shooting, we were like three hours in. Li Shai is here. Hey, Wait, lots, of <laughs> lots of fun. Lots of fun. The elevator stopped working for a while. It's really scary. It may not be working now. We don't know. We might be here. Okay, anyways, so I'm about to sign Please this. Please get us out. Hey, let me talk about this elevator though. So this hotel, like the elevator has mirrors in it, so we can't even film there. We found the service elevator and we're just using it. There's no one ever using it. It's like perfect. It's like creepy and stuff. Day two of the shoot took place right after a performance while everybody else was eating or resting or, you know, just taking a break. I took off my show makeup got ready and we began shooting right afterwards. That was a scene when I went to the lobby and met Milen and also met Li Shai. Even though it was really hard on that day, we had a really nice surprise. Check out the video to see what happened. Today we got saved big time. We have no planning, we basically had no lights. And then I called one of my friends, he's a professional cinematographer. Can you help us give us a tripod? He's like, yeah, you need anything else? I'm like, maybe you can stay around. He brought a crew and then he brought lights. He brought his own camera and he helped us film the whole thing. I think we couldn't have gotten the shot without him because the light was changing. You see, it's nighttime right now, right? When we started, it was bright outside. We worked really guerrilla. Uh, point of shoot and they're like professional. It's a whole different world, but it's really exciting. Day three was also in Toronto and this is our hardest day by far. Basically, we shot the whole day. So we shot three floors in one day. Right after lunch, we got back to the hotel and then we rushed outside and I shot all the scenes with Diana and it was like freezing outside. Then we came back into the hotel, we shot another part in the hotel and then we went to another place and we shot the final ending scene, which is at the staircase. You guys can check out the video to see how hard it was. Okay. Yay. All right. Send you money later, okay? Two dollars. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes. This is called torture. I'm like tensing up right now. Thank you, Diana, for being in the video. You're not welcome. <laughs> uh, now we're going back. It's freezing. We have three more scenes to shoot, and it's already uh, nine. It's nine. Wow. We had a performance the next day and we finished around 11.30 at night. The whole crew was really tired, but they still had to perform the following day. So that was what made it really hard. The show tomorrow, we have a one, two, one. Oh, at least we get everything done today so we don't have to do anything on the show days. So day four is at the airport because we have to travel with everybody, right? So we got to the airport and we had around an hour and a half to shoot everything we needed at the airport, which was the beginning gift shop scene, also the me being late scene and talking to Will. So we had a time crunch. And if we didn't finish shooting, we'd actually be late for our actual flight. So in real life, we would have been late and in the movie, we would have been late too. The good thing about that day was everything worked out really well. We found a really nice gift shop really fast, shot everything. Usually in airports, it's kind of hard to find a completely empty terminal. And I was really worried for this part, but we were just walking and there was a whole bunch of empty terminals. And then we just came in, found one and shot it. And it was all good. Afterwards, we went on the airplane. I asked the guys to move around so we could actually arrange the seats. So it would be Jisung, Will and me sitting there. And I got out of my seat and then we just shot while those two were there. And I was really afraid of the flight attendant telling me to stop, but actually it was a big plane. So we got that done. So it was really lucky, those two shots. And day five, we shot in London. This is the most fun shooting because we're next to Big Ben. I felt like I was on like doing a professional movie. Also, I want to thank Will and Jisung here for all their support. In the past, when I made movies with Jisung, it used to be 
really hard to work with him. This time though, he knew that this was such a big undertaking that both of them sacrificed their time and they just supported me all the way. Ji Sung supported me a lot on this film because he's also a choreographer. He knows all the pressure there is when making something like this. Halfway into making the film, I kind of burned out. There was not a lot of people I felt at the time supporting me. And then he came and talked to me. He's like, you know, when I make dances, I go through the exact same thing. Before you make the dance, people don't know what you're doing. People don't support you. But after you make it, it's always good. So just keep trying. You'll be fine. I understand how, what you're going through. And that actually helped me a lot. Thank you, Ji Sung and Will. This movie would not be what it was without them. So that's all for the shooting of this film. It took five days. The hardest part for me is the fact that I had to direct and act at the same time. I also have to worry about what props there are, how much time we have left to shoot. Um, in this scene, what I'm wearing, what I should be feeling, what leash I should be feeling, what Malen should be feeling, the angle of the shot, and that had to be in my character. So there's so many things going through my head. To be honest with you guys, I feel like my acting on this movie was very mediocre. I felt like I could have done a lot better, but it was the best I could do at the time because there's so many things I have to worry about. I also wanted to thank uh, Cameraman. Without him, I wouldn't be able to make this film because we worked together on Disconnect, so we kind of knew what each other wanted. That is really helpful when your cameraman knows exactly what you want. Thank you, Russo. Good cameraman. The final process in filmmaking is post-production, which is editing, VFX, and sound. I had somebody helping me doing VFX and sound, but that meant I have to get film basically cut up already with temp music on the bottom. You need to lock down everything, nothing can move. And then they can start doing VFX on top of that and start doing sound on top of that. After we finished shooting, in the shortest amount of time, I had to edit the movie. That was the hardest part because my schedule would be wake up in the morning, edit, go to the theater, have a show, come back, edit more. The whole time I was editing, I didn't sleep any earlier than 1.30 or 2 every day, and I still had performances. I remember the worst was when we had two shows that day. I woke up in the morning, did some short editing, I had two shows, came back to the hotel and started editing again. That was like when I really wanted to burn out. I remember we were in London. You know London has those nice buses where you just sit on top and you can see the scenery? They booked us a nice bus and we we're going around London looking at the scenery. Everyone's looking outside. I'm on my computer trying to edit. It drained all my time and it drained like so much out of me. What made me persevere the whole time was actually the meaning behind the story. And I'm gonna let you guys know what that is right now by starting with why I chose the number 33. In the Buddhist school, they believe that all of existence and all living things cycle eternally within three realms. The realm of non-liking, the realm of liking, and the realm of desire. Within those three levels, it's separated into 33 different smaller levels. Like in the hotel, what level you are is based on your moral character. If you're at a high level and you lose morality, you drop further and further down to the lowest levels, which is where all the lower morality beings are. As you can tell in the movie, that's where the elevator came in, where Sam's desires made him go further and further down in the hotel. It's the same way going up. If you raise your morality, you can ascend in level and you can go back up, which is Sam walking up the stairs at the end when he got rid of all his desires. So that's kind of the concept behind this film. The wisdom I got for this film is all due to my spiritual belief. And the teacher of my spiritual belief actually wrote an article called How Humankind Came to Be. And this article goes in depth about these three realms and talks even further about different things. And I really, really recommend you guys look at that article. I'm gonna link it below. All of what I do and what I can do for this film, the inspiration, the wisdom, everything, again, came from my spiritual belief. So that's very important to me. And that's also what made me persevere and finish making this movie because I felt it was so important and such a special message. Right now, I'm here with Milen Nachev, a receptionist in my movie. Milen, how are you doing? Pretty good, thank you for asking. Thank you for coming and thank you for being on the movie. Thank you. So I'm gonna hand you a small gift and I want you to hold this throughout this interview. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that looks familiar. <laughs> okay, well then we're gonna start things off. I'm gonna read a comment by one of our fans. And she says, thank God to put Milen in. He released the intensity, love Milen. Too cute, he can be Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Really? So, Milan, I just want to ask you, you have any comments or anything you want to say to the audience or about this movie or anything? For me, the movie was a fascinating experience. And it was very smooth. It shows me how important is when the director knows exactly what he wants and when the director visualizes everything even before start shooting the movie. Yeah. It helps with face expression, it helps with acting, it helps with how you offer the dialogue to your partner yeah. on screen. 
it helps everything. So that's extremely important. Well, I just want to thank Milan again because before we actually shot his scene, he was busy before that. He came in and he killed it. And he tried two or three times and he got it. So Milan, I'm gonna take this back. But thank you so much for being my movie. Thank you, Sam. Amazing. My pleasure. Okay. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully I'll have you again sometime. I'm looking forward. <laughs> okay. Misha, thank you for being on my movie. Thank you for having me, man. It was a really good experience. So I want to present you with something first. Um, I hope oh you know what goodness. it is. This is, it looks just like me. <laughs> and, uh, hmm, I think I have a better nose. It was a lot of fun. It's actually my first time doing anything like this. Okay. And um, my first acting gig. And uh, if you can call it acting. And it was a lot of fun. Actually, Sam uh, did a really nice job directing. What I liked, actually, not just you, but the whole team, the cameraman, the people who just move things from here to there and from there to here and open doors for us. Um, just really good teamwork. Nisha, the reason I picked you is because obviously you're really good for the role, but also like, I heard you had acting classes before, right? I had some acting classes. Um, I was uh, never one of the better actors in the class, but I learned a lot from my teachers and uh, the people in the class. And it looks like something fun to do. It looks like something I would enjoy doing more, uh, but it was really my first time doing it. And to be honest, did not have a lot of prep time. Like you gave me the lines and then we did them because we were in the middle of tour. We had a long run of shows in Toronto because tour is pretty intense, especially for dancers, physically, mentally, and um, it's pretty impressive. There's a problem though, Mishai. I realized that you didn't watch the movie yet. First of all, I just drove the truck four days back from Mexico while you guys were at home, I think mostly eating and sleeping. Okay, um, So I uh, spent four days eating gas station food <laughs> and I did not watch the movie, but I heard a lot of, like my phone started exploding with messages from people. All positive, they loved the movie, they loved the message, and uh, but I have not seen it. I'm a little afraid to, to be honest. You gotta watch it because I think it's a good movie. Uh, I heard it's a good movie, I will probably see it, but I need to be mentally ready. Um, I did see the trailer, and the trailer looked good. Okay, let's see what other people online are saying about it. Are you ready for this? These are some comments, okay? Okay. This person says, oh wow, it's amazing how you guys found an actor that looks exactly like Dracula. Okay. You guys say if he looks like Dracula in the comments. L, which I think is L for Lucifer. Insightful. That's true. Very insightful. I'm sorry to say this, but our MC, Lishai Lamesh, fits the antagonist role incredibly well. He looks genuinely creepy. <laughs> We're going to zero. This is where I live. That's so creepy, I lost myself for a second. That's really good though, let's do it again. You said there were compliments. Okay, okay, compliments. Uh, Great job, well done. By the way, Lee Shai looks so evil and scary. No, he's a wonderful actor. Not. So basically, I'm typecast at this point. Yeah, so we have to do another film sometime where I uh, cast you as the main uh, protagonist, good guy. Yeah, put me as an angel and uh, then we'll see if I'm actually acting or not. Well, Alicia, I want to thank you again for being on the film. It was really fun. I mean, I mean it and then looking forward to maybe another opportunity. We'll see. Part two? Hotel Day 3 Part 2? You guys leave in the comments. Hotel 66. 66. 66. 66.6. Oh, this thing is actually a flippable flesh. So it can be both good and bad. I think in every person, there's a good and a bad side. And you just, it's up to you, your willpower and your choice to pick if you're gonna be the good or the bad. Oh, deep stuff there, okay? So remember which one to pick, okay? And now I'm gonna read some of my favorite comments from you guys. First comment, number 33 recalls me of the 33 levels and the three realms of Buddhism. The message behind it is so meaningful. Don't be tempted by material possessions in this world and forget our mission, our true home. The password also struck me deeply. I watched your film twice, great piece. Sophia, you got it. You got it without me saying, good job. This is a funny comment, it says, um, so Diana didn't make it to the show eventually. That's funny, Diana did make it to the show eventually. She just playing a character in the movie, but that's a good joke. Life is like living in a hotel temporarily. We came here for a purpose and not to get lost in the material world and forget our true path. James, I think you hit it really well on this one and I have to completely agree with your um, outlook. And that's why I chose the hotel in this movie because I feel like um, we all have a higher purpose and where we are right now is just temporarily. This is another funny one, and it says, uh, I keep having dreams of seeing Shin Yun and meeting the Three Musketeers, low. And someone else commented, low, same. Okay, really funny, but I think um, we're definitely gonna have a chance to meet you guys because we're having more fan meets and stuff, so don't worry, your dream will come true. And there's a lot of comments that actually inspire me to keep going and making more films, and this is one of them. This is amazing. Thank you for making it, all the effort. The scene I feel like I keep forgetting something is like an alarm bell in my mind. The whole movie is such a booster to keep focused on my path. Very inspiring. Thank you, and actually your comment inspires me to keep making more movies, even though it's really hard. Thank you so much. This is my favorite comment, okay? It's in Chinese by Johnny Shaw, but I translated it. It says, as various milk tea and fruit tea shops are opening more and more, the temptation is getting bigger and bigger. The road to giving up milk tea and fruit tea is extremely difficult for me. 
This short film of yours has strengthened my determination not to drink milk tea and fruit tea. Thanks a lot. Okay, the reason I like this comment so much is because he noticed that in one of the scenes I had a milk tea and I was drinking it and he looked at himself and he realized he was addicted to milk tea too. Let me tell you, Johnny, milk tea addiction is a real thing. I have it. We do not do a good job here on this channel uh, getting rid of it, but I'm glad this film made you want to quit milk tea and maybe one day I'll quit milk tea too, but we have to see. Okay, that's all for the comments. I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting this film. Uh, it was hard, but again, I said, it was very, very worth it, and I'm glad I made it. So remember to like this video to support me, and also subscribe because we have more amazing content coming on like this. Just leave in the comments what you think of what I said, and maybe if you have more theories. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, the, you, like the, you guys like the slippers? So for filmmaking, you just look good up here, and down there, it doesn't really matter how you look.